Good morning. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for being with me this morning and reach out to you in love and, and pray that this message will encourage you this morning, what God's put on my heart. We play, we sing a song that's called uh, Not Afraid, and it's based from this scripture which the Lord had me in this morning, so I thought we'd just start there. And um, a few years ago, we had to change some things around <clears throat> in this in our facility here, and, and what that's wonderful is God is always changing things. Things are always being changed and rearranged. And so you just get comfortable and then get, guess what, there's another thing he wants you to like move around and make an adjustment on. And so um, it, when, we, when we did this, um, there was a scripture from Zephaniah chapter three that the Lord had me just really spent that whole, that whole year on Zephaniah three, which the, 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 the key verse for me was that the Lord God is mighty in the midst of me that he is mighty inside of me. And that force inside of me is a victorious force, amen? And that no matter what obstacle, no matter what situation might be in front of me, that if as long as I continue to meditate and focus on the, the, the power of God and the spirit of the Lord that has been deposited in me, then I would, I would be an overcomer. I would overcome the obstacle. And so it seemed that year that um, I would go through one hoop and one obstacle and another obstacle, and I would walk into the, the different situations, and it would just be like they, people were just like, I could sense that the spirit was like, who are you to talk to me? I know you. You know, I know you. And, um, and, but Jesus himself was um, uh, like that happened to Jesus as well. That he would go into the city and it said that in, in um, his city that the people um, said, isn't this Joseph's son? I know him. Didn't he grow up with us? Who is he to say and preach and, and say these things and be our deliverer? And so we have to be aware of ourselves that we don't want to get too familiar with people that we re won't receive the anointing of God upon their lives because we knew them then or we knew this. And you need to respect the anointing. We need to respect and you need to, to decide that I'm not going to say I know them. I know, you know, <clears throat> I know that they have a dirty house or I know they have this and I knew them back when but that you will receive the word of God when it's delivered to you. In, in that passage of when Jesus went into his own hometown and being back in Vera, I'm in my own hometown where I grew up. And um, he could do no mighty works because of their unbelief, because they were familiar. And so, but I wanna encourage you, no matter where God sends you, there's always gonna be somebody that will receive you. And so even though there's somebody that there's people that don't, you just shake the dust off and you just move into another situation and you just say, Lord, I know you've got somebody else here. When we began the ministry many, many years ago, we thought we were going to minister to this group of people. But, you know, it's been a, an ever-changing, a continual flow of people in and out of this uh, the ministry and underneath our ministry and, and uh, equipping people for the work of the ministry. And so it's not looked at all, I think, what we thought it was going to look like, but we just kept our eyes on Jesus, kept looking to him. He's the author, and he's the finisher of our faith. We've made some mistakes along the way, but we've repented, and we've asked the Lord to help us, and he's re received our our. Um, our sorries, and we said, okay, Lord, we're going to start again. Show us how to do it this time. And, and so, because you can, um, one of my uh, scriptures that I hold to is from Psalm, um, it's, I think it's Psalm 19, at the end of Psalm 19, it says, uh, free me from unconscious or presumptuous sins that they may not have dominion over me. And so, the best person to to help you in that area is the Lord, the Holy Spirit. And he is your helper. He is your guide. He is the voice of truth. And so um, if your heart does not condemn you and you're trusting and looking to the Lord, then you go in peace. 
Amen? Because people hear things that you don't say. They, um, when people are walking in a fence in an area of their life, they're offended at everything. They're offended at the, at the dog. They're offended at this. It starts, at, it's a, and when, when you find that you're being offended and you get over to be offended with people in the ministry and offended with the preaching of the gospel or offending with the word, offended with the word, you better watch out because that if you picked up a spirit of offense. But the good news, news is, is you can just tell it to go in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Because he, the greater one is on the inside of you, and it's just an harassing spirit trying to thwart you, okay? So you don't have to get all upset about it. You just recognize it, deal with it, tell it to go in the name of Jesus, okay? So but this is a, it's, it's, just, it's, just e it's easy. You tell it to go in the name of Jesus. Tell it to go. I rebuke you. I'm not, I'm not, being, I'm not offended with anybody. I refuse to be offended over this situation or that situation. And maybe you don't realize that sometimes when you pick up a spirit of offense, the dust has gotten on you. And that's why those disciples, when they went from town to town, they had to shake it off. They had to shake the dust off of people rejecting them because they knew that God's word was true. And if I were giving you men's opinions here, what we're giving out to you is the word of the Lord. And so I'm not going to uh, say I'm, I, uh, it's not, I'm not going to change what I'm giving you. I'm going to continue to stay with the word because his word will not return back to him empty. It will do a work in you. It might not be the work I think it's going to do in you. It's not for me to do the work in you. It's this word, this incorruptible word that will actually is a force that will change you, that will, if you trust it, if you say, Lord, I may not understand this word, but Lord, I receive it. I may not even like when it talks to me about that stuff I don't want to deal with, but Lord, I'm going to let this word do a work in me. I'm going to lay down on my bed. I'm going to let your word minister to me through the night season and help me work on me, change me, rearrange my, my, um, my desires, my tendencies, those unconscious things, those, those areas that need to be dealt with. I trust you, Holy Spirit. Do you? Do you, I trust the Holy Spirit that he's the, he is with me. He is beside me. He goes before me. He's my rear guard, and he is yours today. Amen. Um, hallelujah. So let's turn to Isaiah 43. I'm going to give you a couple of the verses. There's actually several verses, even in case I don't get to them, I'm going to give you some verses, okay? And you can go to them and look at them later. And um, so we're going to talk about um, one of the verses is Isaiah 43, 10 and 12. We're going to talk about Habakkuk 2, which is right division, uh, Luke 10. We're going to talk about Joshua chapter 5. 1 Timothy 3, 16, 1 Timothy 4, um, Genesis 1, 26, 2 Peter 3, 11, 1 Peter and 1 Timothy and Psalm 37 and Mark 6. So that's a lot of scriptures, okay? I know you didn't get them all, but anyway. So those are some of the scriptures that I'm, <laughs> I know it's a lot of word, but you can go back and you can look at those. I'm, I want to give you the word. I let the word lead me. I, I, I come in the volumes of this book to do as well. So I will pick a verse and then he'll, he'll expand on it and he'll expound on it. And so in Isaiah 43, it says here that you are his witnesses. You are his witnesses. We are the salt of the earth. We are the witnesses for him. And we, he wants us to do today to be a pattern of godliness. And so we want to read in the word some of the things that what does godliness look like? Because kind of we think, oh, that's a nice name. And that's, yes, I want to walk in godliness. But godliness is godlikeness. That means we do what God did. Amen. So when the Bible's telling us to walk like him, it does mean that he wants you to act like God, do the things like God. We are not God. We are little gods, little G gods, because um, in Christ, we get to be, we are joint heirs in Christ Jesus. And so I'm not saying that I am God, but that we are little gods little G gods, in that we reign in Christ Jesus because he is seated 
in heaven right now, and we are joint heirs in Christ. And so you already are seated into him in, in this position, and it is a common wealth. Amen? It's a common wealth. In other words, this wealth that you get because you invited Jesus to be your Lord and Savior is common to the body of Christ. But you know, you can, you can be uh, have an inheritance and never go and take hold of it. Never take dominion over it. Never, you can have a whole kingdom and you can have a, a mansion and never enter in and take hold of what it is. What you have, even though it's been, it's been given to you by right of accepting the finished work of Jesus Christ and coming into the divine inheritance in Christ Jesus. So I want to encourage you and provoke you today that there is a common wealth that is common to the body of Christ. Whether they decide they want to have it, it is available. It's a common salvation, meaning common that it's available to all. It's not just for a select few that like that take, it's for those that take hold of it and do something with it and are faithful stewards with it. But he didn't give me anything that he didn't give me more than he gave you. He gave all of us a measure of faith. And so you can't blame another person. He get, he determined that you were going to come into this world in to the, and be born in, in this body, a female. He decided if you're a female, he decided what body you were going to be born into. He didn't make a mistake. He made the right choice as to what you were going to look like. Amen. How, how tall you were going to be, what color you were, what family you were born into. But, but Pastor Kevin has been speaking about this whole year is the substance, the, the substance before they even count your DNA, the substance that God put in you and formed and <clears throat> deposited of you for you that, that he put in you was to be a vict victorious an overcomer. Amen. He had a plan for you. He had a des has a destiny for you. It's never it, it's an eternal destiny. You're just going to be walking in part of it in this body. But when you accept him as your Lord and Savior and you look to him, he will clarify what you are to do. And, and only in being born again and being brought back to what you were like in heaven will you ever come to know your full destiny. Only through him, not by good works, not by, by any other meditation. It is through being born again and accepting because you must be born again. That means you've got to be born again to who you were before you came in this body, when you were like Jesus. I mean, it, yeah, with Jesus, in the, it, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, before you were in eternity past, when you were with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, before you came in, and went into your mother's womb, like Psalm 139 says, amen, he had a destiny. He made that substance, and it wasn't broken. And it wasn't hindered, and it wasn't, it wasn't nonsense, it was a great substance of God that he put in you. And in this substance, when you became born again, was reactivated, amen? But your part is that you have to renew your mind to the word. You have to renew your mind to what it says about you. Let's let's go. This is a great passage to start with, Isaiah 43. And it says, for now says the Lord that created you. Oh, Jacob. I love it that he talks about Jacob a lot. Jacob was the supplanter. Jacob was the trickster. Come on. But God changed his name. And he had gone through a lot of things in life. And he got married. He had all these children. He, he had an inheritance. He had a lot of things. But his name was still Jacob. And still he started to go back home. And God met him. And he wrestled with God. Don't you love it that he that he calls himself the God of Jacob? He's the God of, of the liar. He's the God of the trickster. He's the God that changed, come on, he's the God that 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 changed that changed his name to Israel. Come on. Amen. 
isn't that awesome? So that means we have some hope, don't we? We have, we, you can hope against hope. I've, I've missed it this time. I had all this and I let it go and I missed it again and I had all this and I choose to forget it and I, and I gave up. But, but he says, I am the God of Jacob. Amen, amen. And he says, so let's talk, of, let's just go through Isaiah 43 for a moment. He said, I am the God of Jacob. And he says, he that formed you, O Israel, fear not, I have redeemed you. Yeah, I'm still redeeming you. I have called you by your name. Amen. And you are mine. Amen. He's not, he says you are his. When you go through the waters, I will be with you. Amen. When you go through the rivers, hallelujah, they will not overflow you. There's no temptation that is not common to man. But with them, God says, I will give you a way of escape. There's no temptation that will overtake you. They're all common. That word again, common to man. But in each of them, I will provide you a way out. Take it. There were times I didn't take it. <laughs> so I find myself on my face the next day. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, I repent. I know I'm a new creation and the old has passed away, but Lord, I need to be made new again because I fell right back into that same thing. This is a common thing, but guess what? Jesus, he wasn't, he was man, but he never sinned. So he could be the captain of our salvation. He never once sinned. I've sinned. Come on. I was never perfect. I've never been perfect. Will never be perfect. You can look to me in that I have to run to Jesus to redeem me just like you. But there is one. Amen. There was one that was perfect that never once sinned, that is the captain of our salvation, that never misses it, that never has to say, I mean, he never had to make the sin offering. He never had to pay the tithe. He never had to pay the tummy. The, 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 when when uh, Peter came to get that, that, cool, that, that pay the temple tax, Jesus didn't have to pay the temple tax because he never sinned. He didn't, he wasn't, he didn't have to pay, but, but since, so they wouldn't offend, and Peter was mistaken, he didn't get it still, that Jesus never did, so he didn't have to pay that temple tax, but so that not to offend, he said, go, go to the, 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 the go get that money, go get the, go put your hook in the, in the water there, and go ahead and get the, the, um, get that, big, pull that fish up, and he's going to have the coin, and you take that, and you go, Jesus didn't have to pay it. Because he didn't sin. So don't put people, people are people. And all of us, Mary, what had, she had to ask Jesus. She had to accept salvation through her own son. Even though she bore him, it, what was in her was birthed in and put in her by the Holy Spirit. There is no one that was without sin except Jesus. Amen. And he is the captain of our salvation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so it says, he says, I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you go through the waters, I will be with you. I'm not leaving you. I'm not forsaking you. Men will forsake you, but I never forsake you. I never leave you. See, people think you that people will tell you, oh, well, you've done something wrong. And do you know, Jesus dealt with the sin issue. Can I tell you, there's some, some, some things are so simple. Pastor Kevin said, you know, Jesus dealt with the sin issue. If you don't believe that Jesus died for your sins, how do you accept, expect to get into heaven? The same grace that was available for you to get to heaven is available for that grace that ne that grace never stops. That grace is is so manifest, so big, and so gigantic, and so ginormous. Hallelujah! That is able to save you to the uttermost. That blood, and so the same thing that you're saying is going to keep people out. Is the same thing that's going to keep you out from receiving forgiveness. Do you get that? 
If you're holding people that they can't be forgiven because they've done something and they can't go forward and they've done this and they're out of covenant, it's going to keep the same thing. It's going to keep you out of covenant because you believe that and you've, and you've said that over and, and, and you won't be able to come in boldly because of the finished work of Jesus Christ because you've held the standard up to be something that Jesus had already paid the price for and you've elevated a standard and you've discounted the blood of Jesus and trampled it underfoot and said that it's not, it's not enough, but it is enough. And guess what? Anytime we get off in it, he's so faithful to bring us back home. Amen, isn't he? We just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for making it more difficult. I love what said, was said to Pastor, Pastor uh, Brother Copeland years ago. <laughs> he still Lord said to Brother Copeland, he says, Brother, he said, Kenneth, I'm not trying to keep them out of heaven. I'm just trying to get them in. People, you can get start getting it so difficult to get people into heaven or, or, to, or for them to stay in fellowship with God. You missed it. You know, God is so faithful. Either it's more than enough or it's not. Decide today. With him, you can do all things. Without him, you can't do anything. And he's with you. He was with me in the muck. He was with me in the sin of my current life. He was with me even when I accepted him as my Lord and Savior and wasn't walking in righteousness. He still did not forsake me. He didn't break his covenant because I did not reject him. I never rejected him. I may not have been living my life, but I never rejected him. And I never aligned with other. If I did align outside of covenant, God was faithful to get me back. Show me I was out of covenant. God, something's not right here. Something's not well with my soul. I've got to get back. God's so, he's so faithful. He's faithful over your children. Faithful over your spouse. Hallelujah. He is faithful. Amen. He'll never leave you. He'll never leave them. Amen. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. I am the Lord thy God. I'm your God the Holy One of Israel, and I am your Savior. I don't give people, Egypt for a ransom, even Ethiopia, Sibia. I give, I give other nations and, and, and take you. I give them up and I'll take you because you're precious in my sight and you have been honorable and I have loved you. Therefore will I give men for thee and people even for your life. So fear not. I am with you. I will bring your seed from the east. I will bring your family. I will bring them and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, <clears throat> give up. And to the south, don't keep back. Speak them not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. That's one of my scriptures over my children. They're staying nearby. Hallelujah. And they're still, most of all, they're going to stay near him. Even if they're not near me physically and geographic, they're near him. Hallelujah. I will say to the north, give up, and to the, the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth, and even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. I have formed you. He's formed you. Hallelujah. Be joyful about who you are. Don't be trying to put on somebody else's garment, somebody else's anointing. Revel in what he's given you. Amen. There's no one that can do, do, do Jesus like you. Amen. That's why he has so many different churches and different places for the different types of people because they receive. There's lots of people that receive differently. Even everyone that is called by name, by my name, for I have created them for my glory, and I have formed them. Yes, I have made them. So bring forth blind people that may have eyes 
and deaf that have ears, let all the nations be gathered together and let people be assembled. Who among can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say, it is truth. Because you today are my witnesses. You are the light of the earth. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and you are my servant, whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand me that I am before I am he, and before me there is no God that formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there's no other Savior. I have declared, I have saved, and I have shown when there was no stranger or God, strange God among you, therefore you are my witnesses. You are God's witnesses, says the Lord, and I am God. Yes, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work who will let it? Who will be able to stop it? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer. He is the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I have sent to Babylon and brought down the nobles and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One. I am the Creator of Israel. Your king. Thus says the Lord, I make, I make a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. Do you believe that in this situation, are you looking for God? You're going to go forward, but you're looking for him to make the way. Show me what to do, Lord which brings forth the chariot and the horse and the army and the power, and they lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. Remember you not the former things. Neither consider the way you were doing it before. Behold. Behold. Today. I am doing a new thing. Don't think you're going back to what you did six months ago or eight months ago. I am doing a new thing. Amen. Now it shall spring forth. You shall know it. I will even make a way. He's going to make a way in the wilderness. And I will make the rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, dragons and owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in desert to give drink to my people. In other words, other people might not be able to survive in such these situations. They will go out. But you are going to stand because you are my chosen people. Other people are going to die from disease. Other people are going to die from situations and drug overdoses and different things. But not you, because I have chosen you. Amen. And there's a lot of people I know that should have died from overdoses, should have died from situations many times. But because I have chosen you, you are going to continue to go forward. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So shake it off. You shake it off. Last week we were shaking off the dust. You shake it off. Amen. I have called you, he says, today. The beasts of the field honor him, dragons and owls, because God is the one that will give waters in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert to give drink to his people, his chosen. This people have I formed for myself. They will show forth my praise as his chosen people. As his God, as God likeness, you give glory to God. You give glory in all of your ways. You acknowledge him 
and he will direct your path. You acknowledge him at the grocery store. You acknowledge him by calling on the name of Jesus. You acknowledge him when it's a sunny day. You acknowledge him when the rain stopped, when you commanded the rain. Now, now people, y'all have been here with us. Hallelujah. And we know, we told you, you start by faith. Believe God for the simple, for the parking space. You believe you use that faith for a parking space. I thank you. There's the spaces right where I need it to be. I thank you, Lord. The rain is going to be held up for when I get there. I command the rain to stop raining at my house so that I can, can get out of here and not get wet. You believe you're the one that you're elite, you're to release your faith. I'm, not, I'm busy releasing my faith over the things I need. You got to release the faith over the things that you need. Amen. I mean, there would be a time when we ever. Every, every week when we started going over to Vero, every time we would start to go over there, it would be peaceful over here, but as soon as we would go over to the other coast, and the devil would start stirring things up in this in this area. And so we finally figured it out. This is happening every time we go over there. We're going to start taking authority over the demonic uh, attacks against us over here. So we started to plead the blood of Jesus around our, our house, around the businesses, and we took our dominion. This is what God-likeness looks like. This is God-likeness. This is godliness. Amen? This is what God does. He takes dominion. And you are called as his people, his chosen one, to look like him. And that means you do what God does. He has he has given us authority. He has given us the keys. He has not, Jesus has already done everything he's going to do. He is seated in heavenly places. He is not coming down off of his throne to answer you. He has sent his Holy Spirit in the earth, and he's the one that does the work. And so when you call on Jesus, he releases his angels to do the work. Oh, he has given us the keys. He's given us the keys. He's given us the authority. He has given us the right and the power to stop the forces of hell in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, I'm not mad at you. I'm just shaking you because sometimes you forget who you are and what you have been redeemed from and that what he has called you as his chosen people to do. It is to subdue. Hallelujah. It is to take dominion, not to run the other way, not to just say, oh, poor old me. Oh, poor little me. I just can't get it. I just can't get it. No, you're either going to be pitiful or powerful. Thank you, Joyce Myers, for saying that. 25 years ago. It, you've got to choose, but sometimes you're you're waffling between two opinions and you've decided today I want to be pitiful. Tomorrow I'm gonna to be pitiful, but then on, on Wednesday I'm gonna be I'm gonna be powerful. I'm gonna no, no the devil is just looking to get opportunity. You can't just slack off, you can't just back down. Jesus, God is never slack. Would you want God, your God, to be slack concerning his promises? The Bible says God is not like us. He's not slack concerning his promises. You want God to stand behind every one of those promises that we call him on account of, don't you? I do. I'm expecting God to take stay, stay in his place. Well, if we're like God, aren't we supposed to be staying in our place? Aren't we supposed to be standing when nobody else is? Aren't we supposed to be doing what God would do? That's godliness. It's not some holy, ethereal thing. It's walking like God. Amen? Amen. It says, so behold, I'm doing a new thing. And he says, I want you to know that I have, I have called you. And I, and I haven't called you to give me these offerings. It goes on at the end of this. I'm not calling you to do that thing that you think you're, gonna, you're supposed to do. I haven't called you to do that. It's a humble thing. But who says that you're supposed to do that? If I've told you to do it, then it's anointed. But if you're just doing it because it sounds like a good thing and it's not a God thing, don't think I'm going to accept your offering when I've already told you to do something entirely different. That's what he says here. You wearied me with your offerings. You've decided what you're going to give me. And I haven't required any of those things. I don't, he doesn't need another, another cattle. He doesn't need another ring. He doesn't need any of those things. What he needs is us to obey him in the things that he's told us to do. Amen? And when we do that, then he'll answer us. When we start getting in back into the position that he's called us and said that we are as his joint, as joint ears in Christ,
Christ and doing what he said to do. There are some people that are supposed to teach in the nursery. There are some people that are supposed to teach in the simple basic things of the doctrines of faith or those things. But that's not exactly what I'm called to do. I'm called to call you forward. I'm called to train you in, 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 and be like the Pauline gospel, which was two-thirds of the New Testament, that you would understand that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. That you would get this mystery of God-likeness in the inside of you. That's what I'm to train you for. That's what I'm to call you up to. Hallelujah. And let the other people that still are going to teach those things that they feel. But if, if everybody is teaching the basics, who's going to take them on to the higher? That's what's happened in education. If they want to teach them, still pay, take them through the basics and not take them up. And we, we would dumb down the system. Well, it's the same thing in the church. They want to dumb you down. They want to just, oh, this is just enough. You just need to have this. No, we've got to, we've got to read this word. We've got to meditate this word. We've got to, we've got to recognize that this common wealth that we have, it's not so common. It's, a, it's something that is exceedingly, abundantly above that we all have the right to, but not everybody's going to take it because they're not going to walk in God-likeness. They're not going to take dominion. They're just going to let the devil, oh, yeah, okay, I have a little pain in my leg. Oh, I just can't go today. I got a little pain in my leg. Oh, uh -uh. no, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that I'm healed. I'm going to do what a healed dog does. Because if I told you the amount of times that something will come at me and try to take me out and try to do something to me to get me not to minister or not to pray, I, I don't even, but I don't give the, I, I'm going to give glory to God in every situation. I shake it off just like I shake the other stuff off and I move forward in faith. Amen. Knowing that he's going to meet me. Hallelujah. So what is it that, you're, that you've decided it's okay? I'm 60 years old. I'm 70 years old. I'm whatever year old. Oh, it's time for me to just kind of settle in. Just kind of retire. Just kind of do a little of this. Oh, oh, oh. I tell you, I tell you, you, you know, you settle down and you re, the devil, be, he'll, he'll take that opportunity to take you out of here. You cannot back down. You cannot. You've got to resist. We have to recognize that we are more than a conqueror in these situations and act like it and act like God. Amen. And let's so let's go over here. So and, and I'm going to stop at, at 43 there and let's go over to Genesis. Let's just see. Let's, let's start at the beginning. The book of the beginning. What is what is it? Uh, what does God say? What is was His purpose for man in the very beginning? So Genesis one says, and God said, verse twenty six, and God said, let us make man. That's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let us make man in our image. That wasn't just an image of. Uh, their body, that was the image of the spirit because I don't believe that at that point they even had uh, bodies. It wasn't until later that they had to, cl that he clothed them with actual flesh. I believe there was a time that they were spirit beings, amen? And he didn't need to, to cover them because they were totally protected because there was no sin, there was nothing yet, amen? So there was nothing that was going to uh, take them, right? So, so he says, so this is what his command is to man. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Are you taking dominion today as his chosen people? Or have you retreated? Have you backed off? Do you think that he's slack concerning his promises to you? I want you to know he is not slack and it's time for you to pick them back up and start saying them again and start believing them again because he has not changed. Hopefully you haven't been digging up his word. Hopefully you have still have the seed still out there going and you haven't called it back by your own mouth. Amen? Because we call it, we can call it right back in and dig up our seed that we've spoken. We sent it. And you know, you've got some angels going out and you're bringing them back with your words. You send them out, I'm healed, but oh, I'm my aching back. I'm healed, but oh, this hurts. And all right, but, but I believe you're God, but oh, but you know, I'm, 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 I'm just like you. I'm just like you. I'm not, I've not arrived. I'm still working on it. Happily, I'm still, I, maybe I'm a little further along than you. I don't know, you know, but, but only to God be the glory. Amen. And so when I miss it, what do we do? 
Forgive me, Lord. My words have been stout against you. I have said, I've served you, and you haven't shown up for me. I did this, and you haven't shown Your words are stout against the Lord. Get your conversation all right. Get your eyes back up. Hallelujah. Get it up. Looking back to Jesus. Amen. Like I said, ask him to forgive you, to cleanse you, and then go forward. If there's some, something that he asks for you to do, something, you know, I'm, I'm surprised at the amount of people that will get into people, uh, people's stuff and speak against um, people of, of faith and start their mouths going. I spoke to this prophet uh, on Saturday. It was a, it was an awesome story. She told me that that this lady came to preach at her at her um, ministry. Many, this is many years ago, and her this 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 young girl came, and there weren't very many people there, and so they didn't have any money for the offering. And the Lord, the girl said, "I I can't believe that you don't have any money. I always get money when I come. I always get money." So she started, you know. And, and, and the lady said, well, I'm sorry. Uh, we don't have anything, you know, to give you. And, um, and so, uh, and then that, that was the beginning part of the service. And then I guess the, the other uh, lady was going to do, the, the other, the pastor was going to do the later service. So, so the girl left, stomped out of there, and went with some other pastors to lunch and started speaking against the apostle. Started speaking against her and uh, choked as she was speaking against her. Choked as they brought the people in and they couldn't get, it was bacon, they couldn't get it because it was all the way down her throat, they couldn't get. And as she was dying, she repented for speaking against that apostle. And when she repented, when she said, Lord Jesus, uh, you know, forgive me for speaking against this person. Immediately, the bacon popped up out of her mouth. And she was fine. So she got up, they, you know, finished up there. She got up, she went back over to the apostle's place and repented. I'm so sorry I said that about you. Things happen. Maybe not things that you even know about, but that's a, it's a dangerous, it's a serious thing to speak without fear or without regard over an anointed pastor, leader, to speak against them. It, it's, you want to be careful, even, even though they don't have the same flow as you. God takes those things seriously because you're not speaking against the person, you're speaking against the power the Holy Spirit, the power, because we're just vessels, but it's that power that you're actually coming against God. And so, um, but that, there are times that things don't line up and look like you, you thought they were going to look. This ministry, now I don't think we ever knew what it was going to look like when God called us, but we've been faithful to continue to move forward by faith. Hallelujah. And you're going to never be able to get very far without faith that God's going to meet you. We are faith people all the way. Hallelujah. And so here you can see in this uh, section here in Genesis, this is one of the ways that God looks, looks like. He, he, tell, he says, have dominion. That means you're to take dominion. What are you not taking dominion on today? Are you not taking dominion? Now, if you are married, you are one. <clears throat> you are one flesh. You have dominion over that person's body. Are you decreeing over that person's body? Are you speaking over it because you are one flesh? Amen? So you have an entitlement. It's not about their will, okay? It's about that you are, they are like your body and that you have authority 
to speak life over it, to pray over it, just like you do over it in your own body. Amen? And so, are you speaking? If you're married, you can be speaking. Are you, are you taking dominion over your home? I spoke to you at the come away or spoke to the ladies that were there about Psalm 101. I will make a decision. I will walk within my house with integrity. I will not put a base thing before my eyes. I hate the works of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. It will not get on me. I hate the works of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. I don't let people come in gossip. If there's a gossiper, a, a, a lady that's talking about th these people that comes around you, if they're talking about them, they're going to be talking about you. Just want you to know. If you think that you can sit around with somebody and she's going to just talk about those other people, no, she's going to be talking about you. And so you want to be careful what you say and have your honorable in your conversation. It says that in 1 Timothy 1, 4, these are some of the things that, that he says not to do. It says in first, let me get over the first Timothy. Hallelujah, don't. These are some things of do nots. I want you to not do these things. These are, and if you are, let's, let's just go ahead and get it cleaned up because it's time to clean some things up. I don't know about you. We're, we're always, seems like we just clean it up and then it gets dirty again. <laughs> you know? But that's, the good news is that, that God is sweeping. He's a sweeper. He's got a big, giant broom. If you've never seen it in the Bible, he gave it to me last year. I mean, about five years ago. And then he told me that he was sweeping this nation. And I didn't even know it was the scripture. I saw it in the spirit. So that you can have that one over the nation. God is still sweeping this nation. He hasn't stopped. Isaiah 14. He's promised. He's sweeping. He is sweeping this nation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. First Timothy. Um, thank you, Jesus. I've, I've got to have what he says. Amen. I want to hold on to what God says concerning an issue that I'm, pon I'm pondering. And frequently I'm asking the Lord in my heart before I go to bed, how, what do you feel about this? How do you think? What do you think? And if he doesn't give it to me in a dream, he'll wake me up with a scripture perter pertaining to it or, you know, something like that. So he, he, he's, this is my common wealth. That's a common wealth, okay? So I just want you to know you have that common wealth. As well, let me find Timothy. It's eluding me here. Okay, I'm talking and not thinking here. Okay, in First Timothy one four, it says, "Neither give heed." We'll go to three. As I besought thee, abide still at Ephesus, and when I when I went into Macedonia, that you might charge some that they teach no other doctrine. And, ne and do not give heed to fables. Sometimes we pick up a legend or a fable or a myth, but it's not true. And so, or endless genealogies. You know, you can spend some of them on your lineage. But when you get all off into who's your great-grandfather and how much, you've left Jesus. You haven't talked about because we're all grafted in. And how we're grafted in is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's the one blood that we're grafted in by. But if you spend all your time and whose great grandfather I was and how I have that and how I have that, instead of like Pastor Kevin's been sharing, we have that substance from God that was put in all of man and that he has a calling and a design for us. And that kind of sets you free from studying all those genealogies because they minister. It says right here what they do. They minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment, commandment is love out of a pure heart and a good conscience and a faith unfeigned or, or un, uh, unstopped, hallelujah, and sincere, amen? And then in 1 Timothy 3.16, it says here, hallelujah, hallelujah, but without controversy, Great is this mystery. There's a mystery of godliness. That God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, 
and received up into glory. There is a God, this, this mystery of how Jesus himself lived is how we're to live. That we, what we, we've been born in the flesh, but then we get born again in the spirit. Angels see our confession of faith. We start to begin to preach to the unbeliever by our testimony, amen. And we get to be believed on. You might look, preach a little bit before you fully have it, but as you preach to the, to the non-believers, then you get to be believed on through the world. People believe on you, and then you're received up to glory. Amen? So there's a progression even there. You could spend some time just meditating on this is what your life. So your angels, once you've been born again, angels um, have acknowledged that you were received the spirit of Christ, and they are working for you. They are behind you, around you, beside you, and they are um, witnesses. So you can never say you didn't know something because, I mean, the Holy Spirit himself is helping us, New Covenant believers, to bring things to remembrance, to check our spirit. If we missed it in an area, he's faithful. So if you miss something, if you've been, you know, out of, um, off of, um, of your faith, the Holy Spirit, that's why it's so important to have that time with the Holy Spirit. Ask him, commune with him on your bed, it says in Psalms. I do that. I commune. I say, Lord, we take the covenant meal a couple times a day. I think I told you the Lord spoke to us to do that. So we take the covenant meal before we go to bed at night. We do it every night. And so we, or we may do it at, at dinner time, but every evening we take it, the covenant meal. And so we just commune and remind ourselves that we have all the benefits of that meal. And then we ask the Lord when we say our prayers, and then I ask personally, we'll say, Lord, he knows I'm asking him about something. I want you to speak to me concerning this. He will answer me. He will give me scriptures. I will wake up with scriptures. I want to know it's from him. That's not just a great idea. It's not just something that I, I heard, you know, on the, saw somewhere, but it's his word. And that's so, I, I want to lean on the more sure word of prophecy. I really don't trust man. I trust God's word. That his word is able to instruct, as Pastor Kevin talked about yesterday, it is profitable. Amen. And it is profitable for all things. Let's read that. It's in 1 Timothy. Um, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter. Uh, let's see. Did we get it there? 316. Talked about. Um, Father, where is it? I see it. Uh, we should have it. Mark is a bazillion times here. There you go. Um, should, we, should we have this? No, we, we know it. Thank you, Jesus. Where are we? Let's go back here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I've been reading it. How easy it is to forget the address. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't you should know that? Hallelujah. Well, let's go on here. We'll get back to that. One of you looked that up. It's in. Um, we spoke about it yesterday. That it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for the Word of God is profitable is it, it, it is profitable for all for doctrine for reproof that the man of God would be would be perfect adequate in in other words the word of God is sure that it is able to give you doctrine instruction reproof that all those things contained in that passage there that it is for your good and that you can look to this word and trust it 
to bring this, to correct you, to help you in reproof. Not just me, but I'm not, I, 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 you know, God reproves those children that he loves. He reproves us. He, he brings us in line. He, he helps us because he wants us to succeed. And so uh, let's go over to 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 11. Chapter 3, verse 11. And this is, again, about godliness. It says here, Seeing then in all these things, it says, let's start above, verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, promise, as some men count slackness. But he is long suffering to us word. I'm in second to excuse me, second Timothy three nine. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word. He's not willing that any of us should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements will melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and God-likeness? Looking for the hastening and the hastening of the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found in him in peace without spot and bl or blameless. Amen? And so one of the ways that you stay in, in holiness is you refuse the vain, uh, profane, um, old wives' tales and genealogies. You take dominion over things. You start to take your authority over your home, over your children. You, you, you take the order in the house. You start to another way, like um, this is one of the things that I use, and, and I give you these things because they help me, for me to order things. That's, I don't just give them to you something just because it, I just give it. The uh, scripture you were it was 2 Timothy. Second Timothy. Thank you, honey. Mm -hmm. 316, that's why I wasn't getting all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. That means perfectly, thoroughly furnished, fitted perfectly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. Thank you, Alana. I appreciate that. So some of the ways that I take dominion and no matter how old you are, you should be forming up your day. You should be, dec you should be ordering your day. You should be not just letting it happen, but you should have some things that you determine that you that are um, habits that you do every day. Uh, every day, I encourage you that you should certainly open the day with focusing on God and inviting Him into your day and asking him for direction for the day, what he has for you. Your prayer should, I would say, should certainly be part of your daily um, thrust that you pray. Pray is not just saying it outwardly, but receiving instruction. That would also come in the way of Bible, a Bible verse the Holy Spirit might lead you to study or to look at, amen? So there are things that you should, you having dominion over your time, you set first how the day is going to be. You have, as being God-like, you set the parameters over what your, your purpose is and what you're about. What you determine are the, the first. What's the most important thing? Because your day 
and how you do your day and what you put first is first. So if you put, you know, some, um, I don't know, somebody that you like to watch on TV and uh, some cooking channel, and you think that that's the first thing you gotta watch in the morning, and that's the thing, then that's that's the, that's your that's your you think that's important. But if you you could take that time and you could move it over into something that is going to be eternal, because as I read, everything else is gonna pass away and be dissolved. So you want to make sure that you are exercising yourself to God likeness, amen, that you are exercising yourself in godliness and doing the things that God did, does. He loves, he gives, he takes dominion, and he takes authority. He comes in and sets the captives free, amen. And so, so, that's, so that's one area of taking dominion. And as we go over our our um, come away book, which I give you at the come away, the first section is personal. And so the first part is you have responsibility for your relationship with Jesus. You're responsible to seek him first, right? You're responsible to make it a priority in your life. Now this should be common. I shouldn't have to be telling. This is a basic, this is basic stuff. I shouldn't have to tell you, you get up and pray, you get up and read the word, you get up and worship, you get, I don't know, I should, if you've been, if you are mature, you don't tell your children at 12 years old, you need to brush your teeth, you need to wash your face, you need to, da, da, da. you shouldn't be doing that. They should already know those are basic things that they do to take care of their body. And you as a believer, there are basic things you do to take care of your spiritual body. Because we, in fact, are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are not our own. We have been bought with a price, and the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Amen? And so you determine, though, what your first part of the day is. And then and, and make those adjustments. Make time. Okay, I'm going to change up my schedule. Oh, I've been sleep, sleep until 1030. Well, if I just went to bed a little earlier in the night, I could get up. Or I set my alarm. Or I set five alarms. Or I do whatever. I have somebody call me. Or I pray with somebody and I have to meet them at a certain time because that's going to help me to set a new pattern. Amen? Whatever you need to do, if it's important to you, do it. So that you can start to set a right the situations that take dominion over your personal time. Amen? So do that. Determine, make some notes this morning. Maybe there's some things that you need to adjust. We change our, our it's a new season. We're coming into a new season. So change, okay, I'm not able to, oh, I can't exercise. I can't, oh, yes, you can exercise. You just don't think it's important. But more than any bodily exercise, if you're not getting godly exercise, it doesn't matter because that body is going to perish. And the only thing that's going with you to heaven and that's going to last is your spirit man. So if you're going to choose one or the other, always choose the spirit. Always choose I'm going to seek first because it's amazing that when you give to God first, that he multiplies the rest of your day. When you seek first him. I've seen it. When I do do not seek him first, everything is all messed up. Everything is out of order. Everything can't work together because there's a principle, a spiritual law that he has set forth. That when you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, all these other things will be added to you. Amen. And so when you do what he says to do, you get the results of what he says. It's a simple. Is that amen? So then the other section again in this, in so this is a way you can take some dominion for yourself, perhaps even in these journal that I've given you. And I have this, this, um, this day timer that I've been using for oh well 15 years or so. Um, I use this because I track what I'm doing. Now you might not think it's important where you go and who you spend time with, but if I find at the end of the week that I'm not happy, something's not right with me, I'm complaining about something, or I have a wrong attitude, or I, I can look back at my, my week and look and see who I've been around. I made their, that relationship more of a priority than my love relationship with Jesus. 
And it's because I spent three hours with them and no hours with Jesus. And then I spent another three hours with them and no hours with Jesus. At the end of the week, I'm unsatisfied and I'm complaining because I, I listen and chose their voice more than the voice of Jesus and his word. So there's the thought, these are foxes that spoil the vineyard of your love. And if you don't, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You're wondering why you're not strong? It's because the joy is not there. Because the joy of, the, you wonder how I do what I do? I mean, it's because of Jesus. It's because of the joy of the Lord. It isn't because I have, I'm strong. It's because his strength is, is the strengthening and the quickening of my body from from strength to strength, from glory to glory, that I I draw on daily. Really, I literally I draw from that power daily. To I don't line up that I'm going to be tired. We make confession before if I've, I've had a big day. I say thank you, Lord. We're going to bound right up out of bed. I don't say oh, I'm the I got to sleep in tomorrow. No, I, because I'm going somewhere. I'm not I'm not checking out of here anytime soon. I'm believing for the 120, and he need you know why he wants us to believe for 120 is because God needs us here in planet Earth to speak and decree and to subdue this land, not to check out, not to let cancer take us out, not to let whatever devil wants to take you out or complacency take you out or whatever it is, but that we would continue to take dominion. Amen? Hallelujah. And how you do it is you look over. Okay, Lord, this is, we're, I'm finishing the end of the month. I'm asking the Lord. Okay, August is ending. This is the 31st. I asked him back a few days ago, Lord, did I finish what you wanted me to do in August? Do you ask him that? I think he cares about what I'm doing. He cares about what you're doing. He's involved in you. He has a destiny for you. He cares that you're here or you're there or over here. Amen? Ask him, did I complete what I was supposed to do this month? Did I answer? I don't want to give him offerings that he didn't require. I'm not going to go do over there when he says this is where you're getting fed. This is what you're supposed to be aligned with. This is what you're supposed to be sowing into. Hallelujah. I ask him for that. I ask that he would correct me. I think every month is valuable in my life. Do you think your month is important to him? Do you, when you come at the end of this month, can you say, Lord, I, did I do what you asked for me to do? That's a way of taking dominion over your life. Amen? Hallelujah. I may not have time to do it every day, but I keep track of where I've spent my time. I know when I'm in Vero. I know when I've been in Sarasota. I want to know when I go to a geographic area or when I'm in Tallahassee. I ask and I reflect when I was there, did I do what you had for me to do as I set my foot there? Because I believe that every place that the soul, my soul touches is, in, is mine in Jesus' name. And so if I step my foot over in that area, I want to know, God, did I preach? Because I'm your chosen one. He said he's formed me. He said he's formed you. He's called you. Every step you make is ordered. Amen? But you've got to decide, Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow where you say for me to put my foot today. Where you say I'm to stand. Do you want me to stand in this geographical area and walk around my house and declare and call in from the north, south, east, and west? And pray over and enlarge my dominion in my neighborhood and start walking, though I can't walk very well in my neighborhood. Or take my daughter and start to push back the forces of, dev of the devils that have continued to have been trying to push us into seclusion and away from everybody. Instead, you say, no, I'm going to go forth in Jesus' name. Even if I feel I need to put a mask on, okay. But I'm going to, you're going to see me going forth because you've chosen me. I've ch been chosen. Have you been chosen? Have you been chosen? Have you been chosen? Okay, then you have. He, the gifts and callings will, are never without repentance. He says he's chosen you and ordained that you would go forth. This is John 15. That you would go forth and that you would bear fruit. Are you bearing fruit? Be a fruit inspector. Is what I'm sowing bearing fruit? Is there an outworking of what is being planted? There should be. 
I've been shocked this year to see some of my faith people, some of the people that have been in with this and, and what how they've handled this year. But guess what? God's always with us. He's always saying, come on, girl, let's get, let's get going again. Get up, shake it off, move forward. Amen? But I have to answer from my level and what I'm doing. And I, because I'm going to answer. I pray for you. Pray for you all the time. Pray for, for uh, the ordained under this ministry. Pray that your faith will not fail. Amen. I pray, uh, I pray that if it has failed, that you d dust yourself off and you get back up. Look into Jesus. Amen. Because he, he is not slack concerning his promises. I use this book also. I use this as, um, again, to track kind of where I've been. I don't have my stuff all over the internet. I think that you've got to know where you're supposed to write things and what you're supposed to t tell people about where you're going and what you're doing. And if you haven't learned that yet, um, God covers things. And uh, don't, don't let the devil know everything that you're doing. So um, watch where you're going, what you're doing. And uh, trust him to tell you where you're to be. And if you're not to be there, get out of there. Because you may not, you may think it looks really nice on the outside, but that's a devil's den. Maybe there is an infection there. Maybe you don't know why you're supposed to go there. But if you trust the Holy Spirit, which is who we're all about, if you trust him, he'll lead you. He'll tell you to get on that ship. He'll tell you, I don't want you. I know you're going to get on that ship. I know you're going to do service doing that way. But I don't, I don't want you to do that. The time's up. You missed it. You're gonna have to, um, you're gonna have to create your own ship. Hallelujah. We're gonna have to change because I'm doing a new thing. He said, "The old's passed away." And so whatever we've done before, we like the word stands forever. But I encourage you, there's something new that He has, and be like God. Amen. Because He's made the way. For you to be able to walk in God likeness. Pray, use, use, if you don't have this prayer um, vision, um, the come away book, I'll be happy to send it. If you'd like it, it's broken into three sections. It makes it real easy for your personal relationship, your personal goals, your personal things that you've got before the Lord, your family and your marriage is the other section to pray over, and then your calling, which might be the you know, the nation, whatever he has you called, that you're fulfilling something in that weekly, that you use this to, um, to as a guide for you for the year, that you can see that you are sowing seed in that direction because I want and am expecting you to have a harvest. Amen? But if you don't plant, if you don't plant the seeds, you're not going to have the harvest. So what, what seeds do you really need to grow up what harvest? Do you need a harvest in your family this year? Do you need a harvest in the ministry that God's called you to this year? Do you need the harvest in your personal growth in Jesus this year? You can, you can be one of those that you've determined is, is the most important for this year. Amen? And then do it. Hallelujah. And walk in God likeness. I thank you for being with me this morning. And I pray that you've been encouraged. I didn't get to all the scriptures tonight or today. But you can certainly go back. One of the other ones is Psalm 37. Fret not. It tends only to evil. And um, uh, you can go through that. It's a great one if you're in having marital distress. Because uh, I've given that a lot of times. Fret not. It tends only to evil. Uh, delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Thanks for being with us this morning. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for those of you that have watched today. If there are any on there, I don't know, but we'll, or we'll watch later. And I just look forward to seeing you face to face, in person, up, up close and personal here real soon. Have a great week. God bless.